السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله My dear brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we are continuing to cover Riyadu Salihin and today inshallah we'll touch base chapter 6 from the book Misalini uh, Chapter 6 title Piety or Taqwa and Imam An-Nawi uh, starts the chapter by Surah Al Imran, verses number 102. But I will be in the shape of a regime. Bismillah, you are not a him. Yeah, you have the man who took a lot of to get he will let a moon Muslim. Oh, you who have believed. Fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except as Muslims. So Alhamdulillah, taqwa or fearing Allah or consciousness of Allah is the title of this chapter. So we're going to touch based one hadith from this chapter, hadith number uh, 71. Uh, Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him reported that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa tuka wal afafa wal adina or translation O oh Allah I ask you for guidance, piety, chastity and self-sufficiency the commentary of this hadith, this hadith contains four words, the meanings and implication of which constitute its essence. These words are guidance, piety or fear of Allah, taqwa, chastity and sufficiency. So guidance here means guidance at every turn of life and steadfastness on the path of truth. Fear of Allah is the greatest means of piety and strongest defense against sins. So whenever we are in concern, in conscious about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any time, any kind of uh, disobedience or anything that goes against Islam, anybody intends or thinks of, doing it the piety or taqwa uh, helps us to stay away from those kind of deeds and chastity is the state of being free from what is unlawful and self-sufficiency is the uh, antonomy of poverty and here it means the self-contentment what it implies is that one should not care for what people possess in view of all these qualities the prayer of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in this hadith is very comprehensive and valuable so we should always pray whenever it possible just like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed allahumma inni asaluka alhuda wa tuka wal afafa wal qina may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our dua like the way prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dua so alhamdulillah after this we would like to elaborate a similar topic uh the topic that has been uh written by imam uh, al jawjia in his uh, book piety at their feet uh talking about parents how could we show piety or be Birrul Walidain to our parents. This book is very, very important book for anyone who would like to learn about piety toward parents. And Alhamdulillah, there are many chapters in this book that talks about different situations. And today, inshallah, we will briefly touch based a few items from this book. So how to be good to parents? In other words, showing beer to them, to parents, is by obeying whatever they ask of you and tell you to do as long as it is not something forbidden.
their instruction should be given preference over optional or nafila salah stay away from what they prohibit you spend on them seek out for the things they like serve them accessibly observe respect and dignity with them don't raise your voice or stare at them don't call them by their names walk behind them be patient over anything they do or that you dislike so alhamdulillah this book gives us guidance how to be a uh, have piety or taqwa in fulfilling the responsibilities of birbul walidain so alhamdulillah there are some stories and hadith related to uh, this chapter for example abu ghassan al dabri narrated that he once went out walking at the outskirts of medina and his father was walking behind him he met abu huraira radiyallahu an and then uh, who asked who is this person walking behind you then uh, Abu Ghassan, he said, my father. Then Abu Huraira said, you have done a wrong thing and have contradicted the Sunnah. Don't walk in front of your father, walk behind him or on his right. Don't let anyone come in between you and him. Don't take the piece of meat, for example, food your father looked at because perhaps he desires it. And do not stare at your father. Do not sit until he sits and do not sleep until he sleeps. Alhamdulillah, there are very good guidance and suggestions from the uh, Sahaba uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu an here in this book we learn. Also, it is related that Abu Huraira radiallahu saw two men and asked one of them, Who is this to you? Uh, then the other one replied, My father. Then Abu Huraira radiallahu said, Do not call him by his name. Do not walk in front of him and do not sit before he does so. Also, uh, Talah narrated that he said to Ibn Umar radiallahu an, my mother is with me. Ibn Umar said, by Allah, if you speak nicely to her and feed her, you will definitely enter paradise as long as you abstain from major sins. Alhamdulillah, how simple, but big reward. Hisam ibn Urwa narrated, from his father about the verse this is a very important verse majority of us know and uh, the complete verse is from surah al-isra uh, verse number 24 uh, and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy and say, My Lord, have mercy upon them as they brought me up when I was small. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to understand the importance and the great reward that we can achieve by showing beautiful walidain. And then Abdullah ibn Awan said, looking at your parents is an act of worship. Simple act, but very good reward. When Al Hassan was asked about Birbul Walidain, he said that you give them whatever you have and you obey them as long as it is not a sin. SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to understand and learn from these advices and apply in our life. And then the chapter 24 of the book uh, also reveals some critical information visiting parents' graves. So Abu Huraira radiallahu narrated that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam visited the grave of his mother and wept such that those around him also wept. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said, I asked permission from my Lord to visit the grave of my mother and he granted me permission. Then I asked permission to seek forgiveness on her behalf, but he did not grant me.
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to pray and understand the importance of the dua and also importance of visiting graves. Al-Fadl ibn Mawafiq said, I used to visit my father's grave a lot once I attended a burial and thereafter rushed off without going to my father's grave. That night I saw him in a dream and he said to me, Oh my son, why did you not come to me? And I said, Oh father, do you know about my coming? And he said, Yes, by Allah, when you come, I can see you from the time you appear from the bridge until you come and sit by me. And when you leave, I can see you until you pass the uh, bridge. So, Alhamdulillah, there are many reward of visiting graves, especially visiting parents' grave and making dua. And as we know, our children and we as the children of our parents is sadaqai jariya or continuous charity and continuous charity continues when we make dua when we make a uh, visit to the graves and feel uh, the uh, the dua and um, we also connect ourselves to the grave that one day we will be lying here and then by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we have next generation they will be coming and praying for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to understand piety especially piety to our parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to learn and apply best to our ability. Jazakallah khairan for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.